You're listening to Meditations On, the new podcast from ISPA. I'm your host, Ilter Ibrahimov. To be holy, to lose gravity and to ascend. Everything that loses gravity is divine. That was the voice of Nahum. Born in Mexico City, Nahum is an artist and musician who lives in Berlin. Navigating between the real and the imaginary, his work focuses on creating unconventional perspectives of human experience by using outer space technology, illusionism, and hypnosis. He was recognized as one of the young space leaders by the International Astronautical Federation for his contributions to outer space activities and was the first artist to launch an interactive artwork into outer space in 2018. Today, he guides us into an unsettling journey and engages in a critical dialogue about the politics of existence, diversity, and space exploration. February 26, 1962. Dear Miss Kelly, this is in response to your letter of February 20th, 1962. Your offer to go on a space mission is commendable and we are very grateful. This is to advise that we have no existing program concerning women astronauts, nor do we contemplate any such plan. We appreciate your interest and support of the nation's space program. Sincerely, Obi Lloyd Jr., Director of Public Information, NASA. Letters like this were sent to a few women that were interested in participating in the moon landings. At the end of the day, we saw a group of men visiting the moon. Perhaps it's no coincidence that Armstrong famously said, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, talking about men. But for a second, what if we could go back in time and change the events that happened? So for a second, I want you now to close your eyes. Close your eyes, stop wherever you are, and find yourself listening to the sound of my voice and you'll start feeling more and more relaxed. You will visualize a sphere of relaxation covering your body from your head, spreading down to your shoulders, to your belly, to your legs, down to your feet. And as you are inside this sphere and this sensation of being entirely relaxed, soon you'll start drifting away. And soon you will remember something that happened and that you have forgotten. Soon also you will find yourself traveling far away from Earth into a new place where you have been but you don't remember but today this memory of walking on the moon will come back to you and you will remember something extraordinary that happened to you okay everyone open your eyes I am not going to do the full hypnosis to you right now Countless of people have been hypnotized through this routine and when they open their eyes, they remember things like this. I remember flying to the moon and I remember how I landed. Once I got on the moon, I started to drift. I felt lonely. And the boundaries between also dream connected. and memory are very fuzzy. It was a deep nostalgia, but also a warm feeling. Gravity wanted to pull me back to I Earth. I was existing more like Rainbows a ghost. Rainbows are everywhere. I would have liked to stay longer. I think I have hypnotized over a thousand people already with this performance. After each session, when I hear the stories and how people get so emotional and I see tears, 
an excitement. They felt it, they saw it, they sensed it. They had an experience, and that's the point. Around 11 years ago, I was working in an underground theatre in London. It was huge. It was under London Bridge Station, and we were crafting experiences and doing experiments with live art and performances, and it was a, a wild place. One day, some people that were already engaged in, in the space exploration field, some curators that were already participating in some of these discussions, as well as some engineers and scientists, they loved what we were doing there. Afterwards, I was invited to go to the Space Federation in, in Paris and see how we could start doing something for artists in space. We started working on creating this like department for arts and culture in outer space. And I would say that the first five years, it was just learning how this field of exploring the universe and the cosmos has actually really strong uh, links with arts, culture, and the humanities. I would say that the beginning, I was just fascinated by everything that was happening. But later... I started to see some opportunities for improvement. Meaning, in the, in the arts, we're having all these conversations, right, about queer culture and feminism and decolonizing our minds and our uh, social systems. Uh, we're talking about also social justice and the climate emergency. Being an artist and also being in museums and festivals talking about these events, then afterwards I would go to the Space Federation or would engage with some work in space agencies and then I'll be like, all right, no one is really discussing this, these topics. And then I'm sitting here watching a panel of heads of space agencies and I see white man, 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 white man. And then they're talking about colonizing the moon and having a moon colony over here and, and extracting resources and business models for new private companies to profit and create their own rockets and their own technology. And I'm like, wow, okay, th th there's something that an artist can do here. And that is, why don't we talk about those things that we are discussing in our field? And that's how we started. Something really basic that happens after an astronaut goes into orbit and then comes back to Earth is that they say, I saw no borders from space. This thing that we give for, for granted, these maps that we had in our schools with different colors and lines, it's, it's not what the planet is. That's a fantasy no? that we invented. I think for the sake of simplicity and making sense of the world and the universe, we like to divide things, right? And we like to, to say humans and non-humans. We like to say Western and non-Western. And, and we have a very clear division between Earth and outer space. But space gives us that perspective. I, I, I praise the the work of Frank White, and he's a, a good colleague. And he coined this term, which is the, the, the overview effect. However, how many people have had that perspective? More than 500, and 90% of them were men. So it's a, yeah, it's a privileged perspective, and it would be great if everyone can have it, but certainly we don't want to have... Uh, millions of rockets taking every human to to space and then change the way they think. So, as an artist, and you know, and trying to see things always from the other side, sometimes I think what we really need is to find a ground view effect. You know how we can actually sense that we belong to this cosmos by just standing on the ground. And this is what 
many indigenous and cultures and First Nations, they knew and they did. So it's time to reconnect to, to the planet and how it, it is part of, 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 of the universe. Often people ask me, would you like to go to space? I was like, well, I, I am already. And it happens that I'm in, a, I'm in a wonderful place in space and I am already here. Um, if I want to go to another celestial body, well, that's a different question, but we are in space. We are in space, but I, we have Earth that keeps us from falling eternally. You know, like the Earth every day is telling us, come to me, come to my center. And thanks to that, we, we can walk, but also we fight against that, right? The act of growing, growing up physically, is, it's, it's an act that defies gravity. This force that is, is, is pulling us to, to the center of the planet, it's in our culture, in a lot of like uh, religious thoughts, especially in Christianity, you'll see that everything that falls is devilish or is you know it's, it's the, the evil the fallen angel or the snake that is on the ground and on the other hand we aspire for the opposite to be holy to lose gravity and to ascend you know everything that loses gravity is divine what is this force we are fighting in our stories but also when you wake up in the morning and this is something i wanted to explore you know to explore gravity by its absence by not experiencing it and to add some drama the only way that you can do that is by organizing a zero gravity mission So I started uh, uh, negotiating with every space agency that I could. Yeah, that's what you do. Like, okay, I have this idea. Uh, I'm gonna call the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center in Moscow and see if I, we can arrange a space mission. And of course, things are a little bit more complicated than that, but the beauty of the, of the artist mind is like, yeah, why not? Uh, and after two years of very intense uh, negotiations, we did it. We went to, to Moscow, to Star City, which is um, this complex for cosmonauts and astronauts outside of Moscow. So we boarded the spaceship and then we were flying and then we started to accelerate and we were lying on the floor. And then we we heard the announcement from the pilot saying it's going to happen now. And in an instant, gravity was gone. And we entered into this realm of existence that I didn't know before. I was floating for the first time in my life and I'm there, suspended. And in that moment, every point of my body, every single cell was weightless. Me and nothingness and the void, we were the same thing. I thought I had stopped existing. My, my physical existence was gone. I felt terrified. The only thing that I remember doing was extending my arms and trying to find something to hold onto. And that's when I saw another body floating next to me and I just embraced this body. And when I did that, I started to feel myself again. I felt my body through feeling another body. 
And I realized that, yeah, this is a message. We can only exist if we are together. Meditations On is presented by ISPA. This episode was produced by Johnny Spence and hosted by me, Ilter Ibrahimov. Our theme song, sound design, and original score is by Johnny Spence. The executive producer is David Bale. Special thanks to Nahum and Orchestra Elastique for providing us with additional music for this episode. This episode was sponsored by Theatre Projects. They know how to create performance spaces that come alive. Learn more about their work at theaterprojects.com.